Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, as we do each and every Thursday at 20 past the hour. And as you go to the front page of TFNN, folks, we get a special treat for you. Our man, Mr. Tim Ord, is going to be doing two webinars for us. We get a we two webinar series that's coming up. You're going to see this right at the front page of TFNN. The first webinar is going to be coming up on June 8th. And what that is going to be on is the broad market, the S&P. The second one is going to be on June 15th, and that's going to be on the gold market. And our man, Mr. Tim Ward, of course, you know, he's been in this market for, you know, 50 years. Bottom line, knows the market upside down. And the first webinar, folks, okay, the S&P, what he's going to be talking So it's going to be a two-hour webinar, folks. It's going to be an hour and a half of teaching and a half hour of questions on each one of them. The first webinar he's going to be on the S&P is going to be talking about his sentiment indicators, the most important um, elements that he looks at for bottoms, uh, the divergences that he looks at all, all together and putting that all together. The second one is going to be on the gold market and that's going to be about ratio studies, cycle analysis, advanced decline, uh, volume indicators that you know he does a lot of ratios out here, uh, you know, looking at the extremes, Putting, it, putting that all together. Now, the way this works, folks, is that you can go to both of these webinars for $495. You can go to each one of them for $295 a piece. You can check it out right in the front page of TFNN under Featured Content. Tim Ord, what's going on? Well, everything's uh, good on this end, so um, anyway, let's just dive right into it, if you if you don't mind. Absolutely. Um, I got your charts right in front of me right. here. So I'll start right. with the first shot. Yeah, the first chart. This is actually kind of a educational thing. This chart is the um, NY, NYSE summation index. Yes, and it goes it goes back to um, two thousand. I think I can't get my glasses on here. It goes back to two thousand seven. What I want to point out, you know, there was a big decline going into the two thousand eight low, and my point is. Uh, for a bullish market, you, you really have to have a blowout to the downside. Yes. And get you get a lot of extremes, get, I guess, the weak hands out. Pretty much get anybody out out of the market. Uh, then it bottoms. And that happens when the summation index, this is kind of a, there's a McCollin Oscar, then there's a summation, McCollin summation index. Okay. And the summation index is, uh, actually, I don't want to uh, get into the real big details. But, yeah, you know, when the summation index gets below, minus 700, which I marked there with blue uh, lines on the chart all the way up to the current time frame. Yes. Then then when it gets above plus 1,000, so it has to go to, to have a selling climax in the summation index, has to go below 700. Then you right after that, within a month or so, you have to have a sign of strength, and that's when a reading's above plus 1,000. And that confirms a bottom in the market. Well, I want to point out in that decline of 2007 going in 2008 bottom, you had a lot of readings below minus 700 there, and I outlined that in pink. Why, why that market did not make a bottom, because it never made a bottom until the summation went back above plus 1,000. So even though uh, you had selling climaxes, it just kept selling climax. You know, it never That's awesome to reversed, know. never reversed until finally, you know, in in uh, late 2008, you got a massive selling climax way below minus 700. Then finally, it got above plus 1,000, and that's when the bottom happened. And that's my, my point for the whole thing. You have to have a selling climax, and you have to have a sign of strength. And this is the if stuff that he'll be teaching folks, which is so cool. Yeah, that, that's so cool, Tim. Wow. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So my my point is getting back to the current market, uh, which we did have a selling climax. Um, I, I didn't write down the date, but we did have a selling climax way below minus 700. Then earlier this year, we did have a buying climax of plus 1,000. Okay. So uh, what I'm saying here, this is not going to be like 2008 <clears throat> decline because we went to a selling climax to a, uh, to a sign of strength. So that's confirmed to bear a bull market. So nice. we're in a bull market now uh, because of that reason. Okay. So if, if the market never got to plus 1,000, then uh, that would be this market going sideways could be the halfway point that it moved down. 
instead, you know, this whole thing is a basing period. Yes. So uh, that's my point on that. And, you know, um, Tim, these are the things that, you know, you, you, it's so cool that you've been doing this so long and you really get to understand these. Because it seems to me, you know, we all have, I mean, my dude, you know, the Wyckoff price and volume, which I love, you know what I mean? I know you do that yeah. too, but it's these things here that I think that people don't have, don't do, you know what I'm saying? That are so valuable right. to people, you know? Yeah. Right. And, and, and that's the reason why... You, you know, as well, we got oversold. We're having a bottom. Well, maybe. You know. Yeah. You know, where's the sign of strength at? And actually, let's flip to chart number three, real okay. quick. Okay. I'm going to scoop. Okay, I have chart three. Right yeah. Yeah. All right. I think we talked about this last time, and uh, maybe not, but I, I did a Fibonacci relationship from the March 2020 low. You know, that was a COVID low, I guess you might call it, and the market, you know, rocketed back up into. Uh, uh, January 2020 high. I did a relation, or I did a Fibonacci re retracement level. If you notice, we retraced down to the October of October of last year, and we didn't quite touch the 50% retracement level. We almost did, and so this market, you know, from the high of of 2022, has only retraced 50%. It didn't go down to like. Uh, 61.8% uh, yes. retracement. It only trades 50%. So from Fibonacci studies, I guess you might say, either this is a halfway point of the move up, which would give a target around 610, or you at least go back and test the previous high. Right. Fibonacci-wise. Well, you take this another step further, I have a, what I think is a head and shoulders bottom. And the reason why I'm calling a head and shoulders bottom if you look on the volume chart of March, we had a sign of strength through that neckline. I did yeah. close of, of the neckline, drew a line across there. I see that. And we, yeah, and we closed above that neckline, which is around a little bit above four, around 405 inside dry trend lines. And so what's important, you have to hold above that line for the market to continue higher. And we did in April, and now we're in May. And May, uh, if you do the volume studies, uh, uh, this month, which is not even over yet, is already higher than the month of April. So you're making kind of higher highs. We did touch a higher high uh, above a previous high and higher volume. So there's quite a bit of evidence, even though we haven't gone anywhere since basically last May. Uh, it's, it, we did have a sign of strength through a, a head and shoulders neckline, and we did close a blow up above it. And if you do the calculations of that head and shoulders bottom, in other words, to take the bottom of the head up to the neckline, you add it on, come up around 460. Well, 470 is a high of the previous high, so I'm thinking that at a minimum we go there to, to nice. 470. Tim, just stay so. there for a second. We get a quick break and we'll come up right back. And what's so cool what Tim's talking about here, folks, so picture, when you do a 50% retracement, which he's talking about from the highs to the lows, that's a normal retracement, you know, in a market that can go up, folks. That's the bottom line. And then he matches it with this head and shoulders uh, bottom that he's looking at. Stay right there. Tim and I come right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's down 12. Nasdaq's up 235. S&Ps are up 39. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord. And don't forget, folks, if you come over to our website at the front page of TFNN, Tim's going to be doing two workshops for us, uh, one on the S&P and the second one on gold. Uh, the, the, and uh, the, all the details are right on the front page of TFNN. Uh, the workshops themselves are $295 a piece for one or $495 for two. Okay, Tim, so I have the, the third chart up right now. Uh, where do you want me to go? Uh, let's, let's go to chart two. Okay. Because um, chart one and three kind of had, you know, that was a bigger picture. Now we'll go to chart two. Sure. And I, I do, I do uh, actually, in a nutshell, I don't know if you, chart's kind of messy. The only reason why, because I do a lot of stuff with the ticks and trend. And anyhow, the closing tick and the closing trend We'll put it this way, a trend close at 1.2 or higher, and a tick close below minus 200 is a form that shows panic in the market. Okay. And uh, now I'll, I'll extreme that and uh, explain that in my uh, uh, webinar. Uh, if you know what the trend is, uh, I forgot, it's, it's up volume or it's advancing, uh, it's advancing issues divided by declining issues 
divided by advancing volume divided by declining volume. Right. And anyhow, if, if you do all that stuff, you get anything over, you know, one, it leans bearish. If it gets under one, it leans kind of bullish. Well, over the years, I figured out anything below 1.2, you're starting to see panic in the market. And that's when bottoms form. Bombs only form on panic. If you go down and there's no panic and everybody's saying, oh, yeah, this is a cheap buy, you're going to go a lot lower. Not until right. people start saying, I'm thinking, get me out of the market is when a low starts to form. Yes. And that's when the trend starts going way above one. Uh, so, uh, but anyhow, the reason why I put all those blue numbers there are when the trend or the tick showed uh, panic levels. And usually if the, when the market panics in a certain level, it'll continue to panic in that level. And uh, I probably at some, maybe the next next week or so, we'll show that it'll look on the bigger time frames. I had a lot of panic around the 360 to the 390 area on the SP or on the trend and ticks uh, on the SPYs in that range. I and see. That okay. There was panic in that area. You're hitting support. So, but yeah, I'm getting off subject. But yeah, what's this? Uh, this is uh, SPY is going back first part of April, and what I'm thinking here is forming is three drives to a top pattern. You had a top in um, mid-April, another another one uh, late April, first of May, and we just had one here last week. If you notice, we did break above the previous highs, actually on a sign of strength, it didn't hold. But if you can't hold the previous high, then what you're going to do is go down to the previous low. Well, three drives to the top pattern has a downside target to where the pattern began. Well, the pattern began at the previous lows, which is that shaded pink area in there. So I'm thinking we're going to go there. We have a lot of panic in that region at the, between 405, 410. So I'm thinking that's where we're going to go. And I got a gap there circled, and we have a gap. Um, yes. I think it was May 6th. We left an open gap there, and I thought we'd fill it a lot sooner. So, Tim, are, are you are you we, saying there's going to be one more panic here? Is that how that's set up? Yeah, I'm thinking. This I see. No, I up. see. This uh, is cool, uh, man. Yes, Folks, this yeah. is the stuff no one has. Trust me on this, man. Because Tim, <laughs> you know, we go back to the '90s. He taught me so much about the market. It's insane. This is the stuff that no one has, man. I get it. Go ahead. I'm sorry, man. This yeah. is so cool. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, yesterday uh, I got. Uh, a note there says 382 down tick rings again minus anything below 200 is panic. And the more down tick rings you got, the more actually bullish it becomes. But the trend only closed 1.09 near bullish, but not quite. And I, I bet either today or tomorrow we're going to hit 1.2 or higher on the trend. Okay. As we're putting this, as we're talking right now, we're at 1.11. So, uh, and ideally, you know. When you go to a holiday, a lot of times volume drops out. Yes. So uh, ideally, when you want to go into a holiday, you like that because that market going down because volume's going to drop out. So right. You're going to test the previous low or test the gap. And if you test a previous low and lighter volume, preferably 10% lighter volume, it implies support. If you test the gap uh, on lighter volume, at least 10%, it tests support. So I don't have a crystal ball, but my bet would be test the gap tomorrow. Yeah. On lighter volume, and the trend's going to close today or tomorrow around 1.2, suggesting that gap's going to find support probably most likely on lighter volume because we're going into three-day weekend. And that's when really the rally starts uh, probably, you know, uh, you know, not Friday. Friday probably be it. Yeah, Friday next week. Down you know what's so cool, Tim, right? Week. Is that, like, I, I know, you know, you've, you've – you, you taught me the, the trend and the tick in the 90s, right? And it's so yeah. cool that how you've, you've just put together, you know, the tree drives, whether they're the top or the bottom, with it, with the context of, okay, yeah, we're going to come back. And again, we know the market's always about strength and weakness, folks, okay? And so this is so cool because, you know, we know we've been, like, when you were saying that one of those charts was, like, sloppy, but it's been a sloppy market. Do you know what I'm saying? It's a, like... Yeah. A, Back and forth, uh, yeah. back and forth, right? Yeah, pretty cool, yeah. man. But, but also, I do you know stuff with Fibonacci like you do, and if you do the Fibonacci retracement, that uh, 405 area, which is that pink area again, 
is a 38.2% retracement. So you, you can do the numbers on that. So yeah. in other words, the sideways movement that's going on since the beginning of April is probably the halfway point of the move up. And if you do that, it comes around 445. So I think we hit 405 again, then probably rally because of the Fibonacci relationship just going sideways here for you know, almost well, two months, all of April, all of May. Uh, then we rally up, you know, probably in July or August. Sure. Uh, to, that Fibonacci relationship. And that's saying yeah. that it wouldn't break the low of that consolidation also that we've been in, which is pretty cool. Right. I get it. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there's a lot of different stuff going on in there, but that's how I'm looking to market. And if you look at the monthly chart, you know, there's nothing bearish about it. So, yeah. uh, you know, we just got noise here. You got to, you know, you got to, I guess, pay attention that uh, I've been long actually for a while now, and I have no reason at the moment, at least on the S&Ps, to think about selling this stuff. Right. Uh, so, 405. You know, I'll probably add uh, something on the options. I don't know what I'll do. Maybe commodities. But I'll have to wait and see what it looks like. But, right. Uh, uh, I'm thinking an ideal. I hope it goes down. You know, tomorrow that'd be work out really good. Good if it does. And a lot of times going in these holidays, you know, there's if you have fear going in, you know, where you can't sleep over the weekend because you're in a long position. This is a type of market to give you know a lot of people fear. So yes, um, uh, so anyhow, that's and when Tim that's says that he'd that. like to see it go down again, folks, what happens is this: is that when you get the third test, also, which is pretty cool, right? That it, you, you get so much more information. It's amazing, right? I mean, that's that's how it works. Yeah. So it's pretty wild. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah. So um, we got one more chart. Okay. We got time I, to cover it. Let's yeah, start, well, you uh, just stay there. We'll take a quick break. We're going to come back with the next shot, all right? Cool. Stay right, all right. Stay all right. right there. This is uh, Tim Wood, Tom O'Brien. Uh, Tim's going to be doing a couple workshops for us. Check it out on the front page of TFNN, folks. We have the Dow Industrials right now trading up 9. NASDAQ's up 243. S&P's are up 41. Tim and I are going to be coming right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow Industrial's up uh, 2. NASDAQ's up 241. S&P's are up 41. We're talking with our man, Mr. Tim Ord. And I have the, uh, yeah, I have the uh, fifth chart up here, Tim. All right. Uh, actually, this is off subject a little bit. You, you remember how we met at all? Um, uh, I, I believe I... I you. I, I, yeah, you probably don't know, remember the circumstances. But uh, you remember Chris Cadbury? yes. Yeah, I think he wrote something in Stocks Commodities Magazine, so you called him up, and you were doing uh, your uh, radio station, and and uh, I forgot how Chris and I became friends. I think I wrote something for Commodities Magazine way back when, and he called me about some stuff. And anyhow, you called him and, and offered him a, an interview or something on your radio show. Yeah. And, you know, Chris calls me and I'm thinking, I don't want to go on the radio. I you love know, it. And this is what I would. So he gave me your number, so I called you up. I love it. And and that's how we we began our relationship. And so, Cadbury was uh, awesome, so, too, man. Yeah. That, yeah. Chris Cadbury, you know, he was always in the top ten of Timer's Digest for yes. years and years. And, I do remember and, uh, that now, Tim. I do, man. That's right, because, yeah, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and yeah, so I called you up, and and uh, and I, I think uh, one of our first conversations was, yeah, I, th I think the market was crashing in like 1998, like October or something. And I remember I was trading quite a bit of options back then. I uh, I said I got to get off the radio because I got to buy some calls. Yeah, but something. it was way before that because we had already done was workshops it? by then. We 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 met in like '96 or something. Was it '96? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Isn't that wild? I know. But that happened when, when Greenspan was on. It was Greenspan and Ruben that was on. So it, it, I, it was live. He said, I got to get off this air. I remember that because what happens, folks, we used to do this program live, trading live simultaneously, three to four in the afternoon. Yes. Now, I remember that so well, man, because, yeah, it, you got to love it, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was, you know, that's, that's how I met you. I. You called Chris Cadbury for an interview, and I love it. And he didn't want to go on the radio, and he called me and said, "Yeah, I said, I'll go on." And how cool is and, that? Uh, yeah, how cool is that? So it's it's, it's a small world. It is. Uh, it is. So, but honey, uh, what chart you got up? Chart. What chart are we on? I have the fifth chart up. 
All right, fifth chart. Okay, this, this is kind of important here. Uh, we showed this chart last time, and anyhow, the bottom window is the uh, 18-day average of the up-down volume advance decline percent, and next window up is the uh, 18-day average of GDX up, or the bottom window, excuse me, is the advanced decline percent, and the next window up is the 18-day average up-down volume percent. Previously, when both those indicators got above 40, normally a surge pattern happened. I went back in time and showed those examples. And we had one on April 4th, uh, 2023, you know, about uh, a little over a month ago, a month and a half ago. Okay. And both of them got way over 40, which predict the market in general should ro- rally four to five months from that spot. And uh, so the market did rally for a little bit, but it has since backed off. And now flip to chart four. Okay. Now, so this this chart is the weekly uh, GDX. That's the top window. Next window down is the cumulative um, uh, GDX advanced decline percent. And the bottom window is the GDX up-down volume cumulative on a weekly time frame. So you... Uh, and the blue lines show the buy signals. In other words, when the buy the buy signal happens, when the uh, both indicators close above its mid Bollinger band, and the sell signals, which is the red one, close below the mid Bollinger band. Okay. And mark those on the chart. And we got a buy signal back in March of this year for that method on the weekly time frame. The only thing I wanted to point out the the bottom window kind of just barely closed above it and. And over the last couple of weeks, actually turned back down again. And the next window up, uh, these are on the weekly time frame, so they're, they're, they're bigger time frames. And it also closed back below the mid-Bollinger Band. So anyhow, which indicator is correct? And that's what I don't know. So, the, you know, I guess the, the bigger time frames rule the smaller time frames. Yes. So right now, this thing flipped neutral, in my opinion. It's, it's not a sell signal. Okay. It's not really... And not a buy signal right now either. So I'm determined how I'm looking at the market right now. I think GDX is just oversold and is due for a bounce. And how that next bounce performs will determine what I do next. Okay, that's, cool. That's that's how I'm figuring this out. And and folks, so, you know, you can see, you know, this has been a great tutorial, you know, coming up for the webinars that Tim's going to do. And you can see this is stuff that you know no one's ever seen. I mean that's the that's the reality. So if you'd yeah, like you're, to, you're right. This is yeah. I I tried using all this other stuff on GDX. Yes. And it's a hit and miss. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, screw that. So I kind of started digging into other stuff and uh, started narrowing it down. And and this is what I came up with. So nice. And, and that's how you've always been, though, man. I mean, that's what's so cool, Tim. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, and and your tick and trend has got a lot more sophisticated. What I think is so cool, also, you know. So, yeah, you know, it, yeah, a lot of people, you know, they, you know, when they panic, I'm thinking if you're panic, you're, you're you know, that's a good sign. Yes. You know, and I, I started to, you know, people, uh, you know, my clients in the old days just call me up, bitch about, you know, Marcus panic, we got to get out, you know, or whatever, <laughs> or call me names or something. I'm thinking, you know, <laughs> we're walking away from a hell of an opportunity here. You know? Exactly. So, exactly. And uh, I started to figure it out. And I go back and look, I'm thinking, that's a perfect bottom. Yeah. So that's what kind of switched everything. I tried to find indicators um, that you know represent panic and VIX uh, is a good one. Probably our next show we'll, we'll show some stuff on the VIX. Right. Which uh, well, is, you know, it's cool, really but. cool, Tim. It's putting. I would say that you know, it's putting how you put a few of them together in order to basically make the probability assessment of where we are. You know, which is so unique. It's just on. It's it's where it's at, man. And Listen, folks, you yeah. know, come over to our website at TFNN. You can, you know, you can test drive the, you know, the, the S&P one first. It's only 295 Or you want to do both of them, it's 495 You know, you're going to have a great workshop. I mean, it's, it's an hour and a half of great learning that, that you haven't had. And then a half hour of questions because there will be questions. Because, Tim, do you remember the first workshop? So, folks, picture this. I flew Tim in up to Waltham, and the, we had a day trading shop, and the first workshop 
we came out of there and Tim was teaching us the ABCs. And this was, that's how I know it was 96, Tim, because that's when I brought you in, right? Well, we went yeah, out of I, our I minds, that. Yeah, folks. That you was, can imagine. You're, you're uh, running a, uh, owned a brokerage firm or something. And, it, it was, a, and, yeah. It was uh, a, and, and so we were going out of our minds. Remember that it was like, oh my God, I can't believe how these ABC work, right? Because oh, you got to yeah. remember something, folks. In the 90s, these ABCs were, you know, just like when you get a trending market, they work beyond belief in a trending market, you know? So really cool. Well, listen, man, yeah. this is a pleasure. Um, you have a, a great long weekend, a safe one, and of course, we look forward to having you on next Thursday, Tim. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks, man. Talk to you then. Thank you. Right. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back.